Right, if you're old enough, you might be feeling a sense of deja vu watching the Andrews government bungle its way through almost every response to this pandemic. There's an eerie similarity for Victorians who watched on in horror during the kane Kerner Labor government years that cost the state dearly billions and billions of dollars in the early 1990s. It's a direct comparison noted by former criminal defence lawyer and current chairman of South Bank Capital, Francis Galbally. Francis joins me now from Melbourne. Francis, you published a pretty powerful piece in the Australian newspaper over the weekend. You've noted the current Andrews government is the worst government since the days of the incompetent kane Kerner regime. But you actually say it's not the same, it's actually worse. Uh, that's right, Peter. Uh, it's far worse. So um, the kane Kerner government uh, didn't impose a, um, a lockdown like this government did because of its uh, own incompetence. Um, nor did it lead to deaths. Uh, but this government um, caused the problem, has locked us all down, has uh, bankrupted the economy, and uh, as a result of its policies, people have died. Uh, no other government has uh, done that. And it's incompetence. We've seen it. Nobody takes accountability. The bureaucrats don't take accountability. They point the finger at each other. The ministers are incompetent. They don't know what happened. The, the Premier says he doesn't know what happened. The Premier's Chief of Staff says he doesn't know what happened. They should all resign. Well, you've had plenty of experience with the law. I mean, if they were in a court, they would be pushed to answer questions. They're not in the Parliament. Uh, there's a circus of a press conference most days, but uh, any journalist who asks the tough questions is belittled on social media, and most of the time uh, the Premier says, you know, send it off to the inquiry or I'll come back to you later and no answers are given. Are you dismayed at where Victoria's democracy is tonight? Well, I, I am, because nobody's speaking out. I heard your last speaker, who, uh, Timotinas, is a family I know very well, go back... Uh, uh, a few generations. Um, I'm dismayed that nobody speaks out about it. And um, I've, I've got so angry <laughs> over the last few months watching Dan Andrews uh, roll up and nobody challenge him. And um, he's like the hero. He has a hero complex. He's the person who's saving Victorians, not from what somebody else has done. He's saving Victorians because he created the problem, but he's going to save it. And then the Victorians who are supporting him, it's like uh, the Stockholm theory. Um, mm -hmm. We've Stockholm all been syndrome, absolutely Stockholm syndrome. So we've all been captured by Dan. We've been captured. He's telling us now how he's going to let us out. So we're saying, oh, he's a hero. He's fabulous. He's great. Well, of course, it doesn't work like that. He's created the problem. He should now step aside and let some real serious people fix it because he's not competent to fix it and so I call, we should get I call, other people in. I call for a recovery commission for you know the, the smartest minds in Victoria, business leaders, economists, um, restaurateurs, events people, everybody would have a seat around the table including the government, including the opposition and really drive some sort of outcome to get Victoria back to work. You got... were there last time round, though, and it cost Victoria billions of dollars. It took about a decade. You reckon it'll cost us a hell of a lot more to get back on our feet this time round? It'll cost us tens of billions of dollars, a lot more. I'm an optimist, though. It, it can be fixed, and we do have good business people here. You've got Lee Clifford here. Um, you've got uh, uh, McNamee here. Um, people who have led huge businesses and know what to do. We should be putting those guys around the table to be telling the government what to do. Now, Dan Andrews says he's got business leaders, they're around the table doing things, but um, uh, for what I see, they're not really around the table advising anybody. And um, his own advisor says he doesn't know what he was told by anybody. I mean, I can't believe that the chief of staff of the Premier says he can't recall sending on an email, an email that, by the way, says from the Premier's Prime Minister's Department that I will give you all the assistance you need. He can't recall sending that on to anybody. I mean, that to me is a disgrace. That man, for a start, should be made to resign. 
Dan Andrews should sack him and Dan Andrews should resign. This Westminster Parliament system that we have calls on ministers to be responsible for their failures. We have a health minister, we have a premier who should fall on their swords. They should resign. And let's resign. not forget the premier was also once the health minister before he was the premier. Uh, so he has plenty of responsibility <laughs> here. Uh, surely we need a Royal Commission, Francis Galvaly. We do. And the Royal Commission should not be brought by the state government. It should be a whole of country Royal Commission that looks at both the state openings, all the questions about borders, border controls, uh, because the Constitution provides for um, free enterprise between states and free movement between states. And, of course, quarantine is a federal government responsibility. So we should be looking at how quarantine has been applied in the different states, take learnings from that. COVID will come back. There will be another virus. There's guaranteed that will happen. So we should now put in place the systems that need to be put in place. I mean, I, you mentioned that the Premier used to be the health uh, minister, but can you believe they had no digital system for dealing with this contact tracing and putting in information? I mean... And still don't, Francis, and still don't. I have to leave uh, it there. It is extraordinary. It is extraordinary. Still don't. Still operating with paper and fax machines. There you go. One of Victoria, if not Australia's greatest uh, businessman slash legal minds, all in the one man, Francis Galvaly. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you, Peter.